Hello survivors and welcome to another video. In today's video we're going to be doing a bit of a beginner's build or beginner's guide for you guys. We are going to be playing on the Handmaster and we need to complete the Whispering Grove on Curse 6. So that's exactly what we need to do and I'm going to go over all the curses. We're going to go over the danger level. We're going to go over what weapon to use and what skills to use on him to complete this. And then as you can see these are the only runes we're going to be running. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge. We are going to try and you know if you try to speed run it or if you're inexperienced and you don't have a lot unlocked because you don't know what you're doing uh, that's okay we're gonna go through that there are a couple of things that you should have done by now if you're already doing like curse six on the whispering grove uh, you know because you should have finished curse seven on both of these first or at least done curse five on absolutely everything before you start moving on to curse six but it is a lot harder now because they did add the danger levels so the uh, you know the Frozen Wastelands, the Dungeons of Despair, you know, does increase in difficulty depending on which map you go for. So if you are struggling, you know, start off with the Cursed, the Scorching Valley, get yourself all the way up to at least Curse 6 on there because there are a lot of ruins that you unlock from there on this map and then do the same with Caves of Dalzog, then the Whispering Grove and so on and so forth. And it's also going to give you a lot of XP and a lot of prestige and it's going to help you with that. Now you are going to start off obviously with the Barbarian like everyone does and you're going to level him up he does have a lot of strong skills uh, you got ourselves the quick strike we got ourselves on guard we got ourselves a whole lot of different skills that are very very strong in the beginning of the game and he gets a lot of finesse as well as block so block a bolt cast chance which other characters don't really have access to in the very beginning now one thing is you can see I've got a lot of characters that are high level again if you take a look at my skill tree it's not very far in here so I'd say this is like the early game kind of thing but one thing to note is I did put some points into some of the skill trees because I wanted to show you that by leveling up other characters you do make every other one of your characters stronger and what I mean by that is in the skill tree if you have a look at most of the nodes they just say increase your damage that refers to the character of whoever skill tree you in so in this case we're in spellblade so the spellblades increased critical damage modifier is increased that's referring to him only but if you have a look at this blue one over here it's got a little bit of a blue hue to it um, this one over here if we click on it it says it increases our armor power this effect is applied to all of your characters so now we have points in our uh you know our uh, spell blade that's going to affect or make every single one of our characters stronger so the spell blade gets block in the very beginning we've got xp gain over here from the arcane weaver we've got ourselves movement speed as well as a projectile damage over here from the sentinel although we're not going to be playing with uh, actually we might play with projectiles so you know sentinel is a good one to have a higher level for if you're playing with the hand master because of that we get a multicast modifier from the beast master there's some stuff on the assassin as well uh, i haven't even put it in yet we get area of effect from an elementalist and then there's a whole lot more we could get from our pyromancer from our barbarian from the death knight the legionnaire everything if we wanted to move forward but uh you know it's just an example to show you that by putting some points uh, in a clever way around in the skill tree uh, you're going to get this i think you need to be like level uh 37 38 or four, uh, just above 40 in prestige on a character to get to one of these nodes so a uh, very very good over there and then uh, to unlock this big uh, skill tree you do need to unlock the middle skill tree i would say focus on green first and then focus on damage the dodge rating as well uh, i say focus on green but you do want to try and get dodge very quickly uh, or as quick as possible as well having that second dodge does make a big big difference and then also the minor soul stones earned is going to be a big one because that's what you use to upgrade absolutely everything so you do want to try and get that then next uh, we go to the character now if we have a look at the hand master firstly uh, as you see he has four weapons each weapon if we go and we can actually unlock the second one so we got him to prestige level 10 which is the one thing you do want to do when you're playing him before you get into a higher curse level playing with the hand master i do suggest buying his first weapon the rifleman's vengeance as you can see it just requires us to farm scorching valley and the caves of delzog for just a little bit so the gems you only need one of each and then a little 
little bit of uh, Scorching Valley's uh, common currents, uh, common materials. And then uh, Caves of the Alzog, you need 500 of the common material from there. So we go and craft it, 10,000 minor soul stones. We unlock these weapons, uh, this weapon, which gives us a negative armor, which is okay. We do get a buff to movement speed, cost frequency, and crit chance, which is actually massive. And now, as you can see, if I change the weapon, it also changes the dog that the Houndmaster gets. Now, the reason this is important is one, aesthetically, it looks really cool. But two, the different dogs have different effects. Now, for his first weapon, it's probably the most important effect is the dogs actually apply wound. Now, since the update or, you know, since the new beginning and the whole changes that came in, uh, I myself am playing on the alpha. You can join it by joining the Steam beta branch in your options in Steam. Uh, in the properties of the game now what happens is the first dog applies wound exposed weakness was removed from the game so wound is the only way uh, this dog is the only way you can apply wound now if you are interested in that kind of thing i believe the second one is going to be disoriented and this is the weapon we're going to be playing with now we start off with buckshot uh, we fire blast a pellet in a cone in front of you causing damage gaining ammunition and brutal Ammunition is going to make it so that when we reach 20 stacks, the next skill we cast from 20 stacks is going to multicast five times. So ammunition is a very, very big one to get in the game. It is actually fantastic for the early game because you are getting those multicasts off quite often. And we get it with Power Blast as well. And both of them have a Brutal as well as Devastating. So Brutal just means we deal more damage the closer we are to the target. And Devastating is direct damage caused by the skill is multiplied by 3 on critical strikes. Some things to try and get while you are playing are going to be Bomb Barrage. Very, very strong because it hits a lot of enemies. Uh, we do want to grab ourselves Shrapnel Bomb because it deals more damage based on the number of bleed stacks we have. We do want to go for something like shrapnel shot. It gives us even more ammunition as well as bleed. And then we can go for things like napalm blast as well as weakening shot. Now napalm blast as well as some of the other skills over here. Uh, you do need to unlock through achievements. So if we go and take a look at those skills napalm blast. You just need to have completed a match in 20 minutes. By the time you've unlocked the hound master. You should have already unlocked the skill for him. So you should be all good. There isn't anything else really besides for creating his weapon in terms of skills that you would need to finish it. Uh, you could use a rapid barrage, very, very good. But again, once you've unlocked the Hound Master, you should have done the a tier two in the Dungeons of Despair already to unlock rapid barrage. So let's get straight into the run and have a look at what it is again. You can see we're just running a couple of uh, skills over here. We've got Weapon Expert, Show Footed and Dash Mastery. Weapon Expert, you have to hit a certain level in a single run to get this the, the thing unlocked. And these ones, you know, again, just quite easy to go and unlock. So we're not using any runes that are, oh my gosh, I have to jump through hoops to get. And then next, we're going to look at here, uh, as you can see, our curses. We don't want the Lords to have extra block or health. So we take the four out of four of everything but the Lords of the Void. We get rid of that one on tier two or curse two we keeping the block chance away from them and then we kind of make it so that the elite enemies don't spawn any quicker we could make them spawn quicker and then have them deal less damage and things like that that's actually probably a better idea in terms of what to do so let them spawn more frequently that's fine but let them be weaker and less of them as well i, I don't re uh, oh okay you can't actually do that you do need to have the clone army because that's plus two over there so unfortunately it does have to be that one next uh it just really depends on what you feel like doing i don't want uh so so here we could go for house of lords we trying to make it as quick and easy as possible you don't need house of lords so i'm not taking any of them what that means is i'm only going to have one boss spawn at a single time uh, so we don't have those over there again you could pick unholy uh, you know reinforcements instead of something else let's say you don't want you you don't uh, like having reduced healing then you can go and grab that so that is something actually that i like i like to have my healing so we're going to grab that instead of lifeless void and then over here again we don't want a lot of elites so we don't take that we don't take that um, again no house of the lords and then pillars of despair they are fine so you can grab them 
it's a plus three it's very easy it's just a bunch of pillars that spawn that give red dots that you have to dodge we are gonna have quite a bit of dodge so that's all right otherwise you can grab yourself the clone army and the uh, warlords of the void but just remember if you do take this the bosses are going to be a lot harder to kill so in my personal opinion just grabbing the pillars for the three extra curse is very very good next we got this one again pillars very easy to you know kind of deal with although in this one being that way that it is pillars of protection are actually very cancerous because they reduce the damage that everything takes so you could instead of grabbing that just grab these two play around with it if you find it's easier to have the pillars instead of you know the lords and things like that you can go and grab that having one lord of the void extra isn't really that big of a deal they are going to be relatively easy to kill especially if you have a lot unlocked in the game then next we kept absolutely everything off over here uh, we kept the uh, elite spawning a little bit and then we got the uh, overwhelming presence but what we could do is instead of the uh, corrupted uh, void hunters we could go grab that and then grab ourselves the uh, revenge of the void and that puts us at 30 percent curse intensity and we're going to get a lot of good uh, upgrades over here so let's go into it now the whispering grove does have a event on the map uh, that's for a whole nother day so we're not going to go to that side try and get stay away from the bottom right for the first two minutes of the run sorry bottom left for the first two minutes of the run because you don't want uh, to deal with that now as you can see the dogs i mentioned that they deal disoriented i was actually in fact wrong it looks like they are applying it looks like fragility or shattered that's one of the two i do have a list i'll put it up on the screen now for you guys so you can see what all of the dogs do but uh, that is what they do depending on the weapon that you've chosen for the hound master so you know use this information for however you would like to all right so firstly we've got a nice area we've got multicast over here multicast is very strong 36 percent increased is great as well we do have the ammunition buff from there as well so that's going to be very very good we could go for aptitude over here but like i said there were some of those skills in the very beginning weakening shot very very strong it does gain ammunition it also causes exposed on enemies so that's a very strong one to go for and now because we are you know lacking stuff in the skill tree you know from other characters grabbing ourselves movement speed is going to be very big over here especially in the early game movement speed is very very important so you do want to try and look at getting yourself movement speed to try and help you beat those bosses move around get out of the way of things and do everything like that so another thing to take into consideration is again the maps have danger levels now and that's going to be a multiplicative uh, upgrade to them so on top of the 150 percent that they're getting they're then getting 20 percent increased on that so as far as i understand it that would be a uh, times 120 percent in you know uh, modifier on top of the hp over there but you would need to know all of that if you did want to know more information i can put a, a you know a google document down below in the uh description for everyone you just need to say thank you to miaza for that um, she's put a lot of hard work into this guide for everyone uh, to you know <laughs> to figure out all this information so you know just uh, give her a, a thank you over there uh, maybe down in the comment section or somewhere else because of all the hard work that she's put into this guide and to help everyone with the game so I'll put the document in the description and you can go and keep it as a reference. Uh, it will be updated as well. It's not necessarily completely up to date because we still or well, she's still working on it, which is understandable. It is a lot of information, but it's just a general, uh, you know, mega sheet that you can get to understand a whole lot of different things and how they work in the game like the multicast uh, calculations and things like that and then if you do want more information you can join the soulstone survivors discord uh, where everyone is uh, where we talk about strategies and information and stuff like that uh, for the game so there is that as well and it does help with a lot of uh, you know beginning stuff and things like that 
All right, so we do have shrapnel bomb now. Uh, what else do we get so that has bleed? We've got the barrage, bomb barrage, which is fine. If we grab this, we are going to get uh, stuff that's going to allow us to get more bleed. Uh, we don't, we got shattered, but this isn't the one we wanted, but so we'll keep the skills available for us to look at things like that. So we'll keep the skills active so we can try and find weakening grenade as well. I mean, napalm. And then over here again, multicast is going to be fantastic. We can just grab damage, uh, some cast frequency over there. And now we've got some things over here that are synergy upgrades like infused gunpowder. So every time we use a bomb or for each bomb skill that we have, so we've got two of them, it increases our damage modifier by plus 12%. So that means like, as you can see over here, we don't have any damage on the skill modifiers over there. If we click this, it will go up by 24% because we have two bomb skills. Therefore it's 12 times two. So we click it. As you can see, we went up by 24% damage. So that's how that works. We've got a 10% chance now for every time we use a blast skill, uh, which is these four over here. There's gonna be a 10% chance to activate our bomb skill. It's a random skill. So it could be bomb barrage being activated or shrapnel barrage. Uh, if you wanna see whether or not that is actually working, you can watch the skills being activated while they aren't actually being activated. So you can see a skill will be on cooldown and then all of a sudden it will jump to having activated and then you know the skill chain is working uh, the best way to see this actually happening is when you're playing with buff skills because the buffs actually have a green uh, active period so there's like a green line that goes around this actual skill icon to show that the buff is active and then that green uh, line will refresh without the skill actually hitting its cooldown. So that's the best way to see that it is actually working. Uh, otherwise you have to like pay attention to know whether the skill actually went off and you can never really tell if it was working thanks to you know how multicast works as well. You don't know, oh, maybe I multicast the skill and not actually used skill chain. So that is something you have to keep in mind, but it still works really, really well. So over here, we did get the bleed on hit for all attacks. So we are going to look at getting a rapid barrage. That's going to be very, very good. We don't need shattered. Uh, I don't think we do need shattered right now, at least. Uh, I do want napalm blast instead anyway. So we'll look at getting that instead. And then over here, we can aim all of our skills for where the bosses are going to be spawning. I like to use auto aim in the very beginning. It does make things a lot easier. Uh, Especially if you just want to just have fun running around dodging things and not think about where you're attacking or where you're aiming Auto aim is very good, but when you do have the boss fights, you do have to deactivate it uh, There is a mouse shortcut to deactivate it So you push the mouse middle click button uh, or you can map it to whatever button you want uh, For me, it's my scroll wheel click so I've got that. So as you can see over here, it's the middle mouse button or you can hold down a right click to manually disable it for a certain amount of time or uh, reactivate it. But you can see the little crosshair over there. That means auto aim is on. If I hold down my right click button, auto aim is disabled and I'm manually aiming with my cursor. So that's one thing as well. Another thing you do need to know is you don't have to run around grabbing all of the materials on the map. Uh, these materials are going to be available uh, at the end of the round anyway they all explode by destroying them you don't really get more to spawn you know they don't spawn any faster or any slower based on that so do keep that in mind you don't have to worry about what is on the floor uh, and things like that you don't have to pick up your the uh what do we call them uh, those soul stone crystals either unless you want to really go and get a lot of that so here is our napalm again we gain ammunition uh, we could go and get rid of this they do have a similar thing so it's not really a big thing we could go and get rid of bomb barrage now because we don't need the uh, bleed anymore we've got quite a lot of all of our attacks cause bleed and the shattered and ammunition is going to be very good over there so let's see if this is better or worse for us otherwise you know getting rid of maybe power blast because we aren't really running crit uh, could be even better but uh, as you can see we do apply 
uh, you know a lot of shattered as well as a lot of exposed on enemies and it does make the game a whole lot easier so you do need to kind of understand how things work a little bit uh, we will go uh, make a, you know a video where we go through all the things like those the debuffs and buffs and how they all work but again uh, like I mentioned, there will be the guard down in the description or the mega sheet. It's not actually the guard because the guard's still being worked on. So this is like a mega a mega sheet that will be uh, shared with and uh, hopefully it will give you some information that you've been looking for uh, for the game. So again, just going to put manual casting on. It's going to just allow us, uh, not manual casting, manual aiming. And that's just going to allow us to, you know, use our attacks on the bosses just like that. Uh, very, very good for the shrapnel bomb as well, because then you use the shrapnel bomb on the bosses like you want to. And that's going to help you do even more damage. So we can lock our uh, active skills now. We've got a lot of bleed, get some cast frequency, the multicast, a beautiful Relentless. So whenever you see Relentless as an epic, it is definitely a pick this over everything else. Obviously cast frequency means you're going to be able to attack more often, which means you're going to be dealing more damage. So uh, applying more debuffs, dealing more damage, everything and anything comes with cast frequency. So you do want to grab that, uh, you know, survivability, healing, anything and everything, damage, uh, it's all cost frequency. The only thing isn't, uh, you know, cost frequency doesn't really apply to dashing, but uh, if it did, that would just be ridiculous. And over there, you can see we're setting the, the forest on fire. Uh, not very good of us, you know, we gotta kind of preserve our forests, guys. Don't, don't set things on fire, it's not good. Unless you're playing a game, then it's okay. All right, over here, we can go with a little bit of area of effect. Our movement speed's fine. Grabbing a little bit more area of effect just means our attacks are gonna hit a wider area, which means there's gonna be even more mess on the floor, which is beautiful because that's why we play these games. We wanna be in these messy situations so that everything looks so much better. Okay. only thing with having so much area of effect means that we can't see the red circles that we need to try and survive but the only piece of information i can give you over there with that is to just keep moving as long as you are always moving you should be a-okay and nothing should really hit you that includes bosses as you can see a nice clean kill over there on the first boss uh, and there we go with Prophetess being dead. So there you go. You can see that the bosses don't really matter. It doesn't matter if we've got two bosses, three bosses. They die very quickly. Grabbing ourselves an extra dash is always, always very, very good. It does help us, of course, to deal, uh, to, to survive more. Having three dashes now instead of two means that we can permanently keep our dashes up if you are rotating them like every uh, 0.5 uh, or you know like every second or two if you dash uh, you will be able to have them up permanently the one thing that they had to revert was that uh, I don't know uh, the, uh, the people didn't really give it enough time to uh, feel like the dash was good or bad I think they all just used to having dash so often that uh, they felt like you know the dash changes that the developers wanted to implement were really really bad where well, it wasn't actually once you once you got used to it it kind of felt you get used to it uh, but anyway that's a whole nother story for a whole nother time let's not get into that right now okay killing the towers in the very beginning of the game uh, it is a must that just helps you not have to dodge as much it also helps you to just stay safe uh, you know the towers again the red ones aren't really such an issue the pillars of despair as you could see uh, All they really do is shoot uh, attacks at you and you've got to dodge them the pillars of protection However, do give things reduced damage taken and you are then required to absolutely destroy them as soon as they come up Which can kind of destroy your flow especially if they spawn the moment like a boss spawns and you're like Oh, but I want, I want to kill the boss uh, before I kill the pillar sort of thing and then the boss takes less damage and so on and so forth it just becomes like a this this really bad cycle of laugh <laughs> so 
uh, keeping the pillar of protection off and keeping the pillars of despair on for the curses is a good option uh, it does give you quite a lot but if you're happy to run around killing pillars of protection as well that's three curse that you can remove from anywhere else to kind of get this done and there we go those bosses are done and here we go those are done there and then what this did is it allowed us to do a 12 minute run on the Houndmaster unlocking the skill mastery blast which is a fantastic and then we should unlock something else from going through here there we go we unlocked uh, prestige and we also unlocked the monkey king by finishing this level on curse six so as you can see by investing a little bit into it we get a new brand new character we deal a whack ton of damage thanks to shrapnel bomb and uh it's just a really really a pretty easy walk in the park without having invested a lot into the skill tree either so i hope you guys enjoyed the video please remember to like comment and subscribe for more videos like this in the future and always remember Keep safe survivors. Until next time, cheers.